going to leave the stage immediately for another uh, short discussion here. We want to plant some trees. Um, because I, I just love this slogan of uh, the next company, the search engine that plant, plants trees. Nice, right? I'm talking about Ecosia. And I'm very happy to welcome on stage now Dr. Wolfgang Oels. He's COO with Ecosia. And this session will be moderated by Jordan Eurman. He's from Cloudfest. Welcome. Thank you, Claudia. Um, yeah, Ecosia is the, the European's biggest search engine. We um, are, I think, the world's most um, um, the greenest search engine of the world, probably. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure about that. And, um, and we are probably customer of your customers or your customers' customers. Uh, and um, um, I, I feel honored to be here. I'm really impressed about uh, the venue and, and the site. Thank you very much for, for having me and, and invited me. So when I, when I was invited to come here, I had to promise two things. Yeah, the first one, I had to promise to tell you about how your companies could make more profit. And I had to promise to tell you how you personally could increase uh, your happiness level. Yeah, and I'll, I'll keep both those promises. Uh, I try to do that. So get your pens out. Um, but before you do so, I'd like to tell a little story of how I got here. So in, uh, I came by train, and there's this media portal. Um, you know, can watch movies, and, and you can browse through um, magazines. And I, I found a magazine called Digital Business Cloud. And I thought, that, that's the appropriate read for, for the event I'm going to. And I, I opened it, and the entire cover was, you know, big letters, green IT with a tree hugging a robot or something like this. Yeah? Um, and I said, well, awesome. I'll, I'll download it, and, and then I'll read it to you for 20 minutes, and we'll have an awesome session. Um, before I did so, I, I read through myself, and it talked about... Um, electricity efficient processes and less uh, data redundancy and um, monitoring and uh, reporting. And, and by this, you could actually save 15% of the electricity you, you need. And I said, well, that's, that's awesome, yeah? 15% uh, less, um, less energy consumption, wonderful. But, but that doesn't really make it green IT, does it? It's just... 15% less pollutant black IT. And, and, and monitoring, monitoring system like, uh, you know, probably also not, doesn't make it green IT, it makes it monitoring 15% less pollutant black IT system. And, and the report system doesn't make this, a, you know, also writes just reports about a 15% less pollutant black IT system. So what I would like to do uh, now is to uh, discuss my three main beliefs, basically, um, around what green IT is, what green companies are, or what even regenerative companies uh, are. And, um, and the first of them uh, um, is um, building your own and owning your uh, own renewable energy uh, systems. And why, why is that important? Um, I think there are three reasons for, for why that is important. One reason is, otherwise you're not adding anything. It's not additional, really, is it? It doesn't change anything, does it? Huh? The second reason is um, it, it helps you to avoid big um, cost explosions. So, I mean, we're seeing this right now. I think electricity prices have tripled. Um, and uh, with renewable energy, you can lock in a low electricity price for the next um, 25 years, roughly. How awesome is that? Huh? And the third reason is... I strongly believe that uh, in the middle of this decade, big brands will not work with companies that are not uh, running on renewable energies, yeah? or whose suppliers or supplier suppliers are not running on renewable energies. It will be too dangerous for them. Yeah? They will be afraid of, um, of uh, shit storms and, uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah? So, um, and, and by the way, so the big I think that's the reason why big companies like BASF, like Volkswagen, like Google, Meta, Facebook, why all, they, all of them invest billions of, um, of euros into renewable energy. And uh, I, I think there's an argument why, uh, why other companies should do the same. Um, and which brings me to my second point. And, and if I look at this, you only get, 
I noted for you to uh, to better follow my um, my uh, talk. I, I noted them there. Perhaps uh, technique uh, can can get the points there that you won't forget them. But but so my second uh, most important the second point I want to talk about is so now you have 100% renewable energy. Are you then green IT? And I would say no, you're just stopping being a black IT company, uh, not yet a green IT company, somewhere in the middle. Yeah? Um, um, not part of the problem we know anymore, but not part of the solution either, really. Huh? So, um, in, in, so my argument would be a green IT company, green company should run on 200% renewable energy. Yeah? It should use natural-based uh, solutions in order to be climate positive. Ecosia plants trees. Yeah, Ecosia runs on 200% renewable energy. Every every search on Ecosia crowds out a little piece of a coal power plant. And uh, and why is that important? Well, I think let's let's look at how this this climate neutrality logic actually came into place. Yeah, you had scientists calculating how much additional carbon can we put into the atmosphere. By keeping, in order to keep 60%, uh, 66% chance to not destroy our uh, you know, life support systems. To be honest, my, my personal taste, 66% uh, chance of that is the goods are not odd enough, yeah, but uh, the, the odds are not good enough. But, um, but that's a different story. Yeah? So then what happened is that politicians came and divided that, uh, that uh, number into 195 national carbon budgets. Oh, and uh, now uh, 195 governments need to deliver on time, on budget, over the next 30 years. And if only one of them fails, all of us are going to go the Easter Island way. What could possibly go wrong there? And I mean, we don't have to wait 30 years for this to go wrong. It, it already provenly went wrong early this year. I don't know whether any of you uh, followed this, but, but the United States, Canada, and the Emirates already used up their budgets, which were supposed to last until 2050. So from, and, and they didn't, to my knowledge, they didn't stop emitting either. Yeah, so everything they have emitted since the beginning of the year everything they're emitting today and everything they will emit uh, in the future will have to be on someone else's budget. That's very unfair, you might say, but it's, it's just simple math. Yeah? So um, we need countries to become climate policies, and therefore we need companies to become climate positive. And uh, my, my last uh, point is about, I, I don't want you to see this as, a, as an unwanted duty. Yeah? I think there's a big opportunity for companies. For companies, there's a big opportunity. And I strongly believe that climate-positive companies will have a competitive advantage uh, in the next decade. Yeah? You need to quickly lock in your renewable energy. You need to quickly lock in your natural solutions. But because at some point, everyone will try to get there, yeah, and then there will be scarcity. But those companies who lock in early, I truly believe uh, that they will have a um, competitive advantage. And I, uh, Ecosia puts, um, puts uh, their money where their mouth is. Yeah, so we planted 150 million trees. We, um, we, as I said, yeah, we, we invested millions into uh, 27 at the end of this year into renewable energy um, in order to have our searches you know, be 200% renewable and crowd out um, coal power plants uh, with every search uh, they do. Um, so um, I, um, I, and there's a third thing. We, not quite sure whether um, any of you read about it, but last year we incubated the World Fund. It's a 350 million euro climate venture capital fund. And it exclusively invests into climate positive companies. And, and not out of charity. Yeah? They also truly believe that being climate positive will be a prerequisite for success in the future, in, in the next decade. So, um, if you build and own your renewable energy supply, yeah, if you become, if you own uh, access to, if you have access to nature-based uh, solutions and have secured them, so if you become 200% renewable and climate positive, I believe your companies will be more profitable. So I, I delivered on the first part of my promise. Yeah, now 
two quick points, uh, two short points on uh, on why I I think uh, it'll also make your lives happier. I think the first one is from a very personal um, notice. Um, I have three girls. And uh, they really appreciate uh, what I'm doing for their future, honestly. You know? uh, and I, I guess if you have kids, they, they will do the same. The second one, let me elaborate a bit more on this. So let's, let's, uh, let's play what if. Yeah? So if, um, if the German government a decade ago would have continued to, uh, to drive the energy transformation as opposed to uh, basically sabotaging it, would, um, I, I think you could make the argument, and some people have, yeah, that, that Russia wouldn't have invaded Ukraine right now. Yeah? Impossible. Um, and uh, that's why our finance minister is calling renewable energies freedom energies. Yeah? And, uh, and freedom is one of the few scientifically proven factors for personal happiness. So may your companies be regenerative and your lives be happy. Thank you for having me here. Thanks so much for that, Wolfgang. Uh, between this talk, and you've mentioned it in the past, that be becoming 100% renewable isn't enough because those that don't get on board will, as you put it, drive us off a cliff. So what do you see as the tipping point for buy-in from companies to keep our planet habitable and in light of the rather uh, fractured response to the pandemic worldwide, how do we achieve uh, a larger buy-in to make this happen? How do we get people on board? Yeah, I think, I think buy-in is one thing. Yeah, I think to me what is much more important is leadership. Mm. We need leadership on these issues. Yeah, we need our governments to take uh, leadership on it. And, and for this reasons, we need to, next Friday, yeah, we need to uh, join the global climate uh, strike. I think it's the 10th uh, or the 11th, not quite sure. The, the last 10 for Germany were um, you know, enough to, uh, to have a change in government. Huh? Mm -hmm. But the new government is too, doing too little, too late as well. So we will need to encourage um, the... The, the leaders, the proactive uh, um, uh, leaders in our politic systems mm -hmm. by, um, and, but we also, I think, so that, that's one thing. Yeah? So we need to demonstrate, we need to encourage uh, um, uh, our, our leaders. But I think also on, on, we, we need leadership from companies. We need companies to step uh, out and become uh, climate positive and communicate, uh, and communicate about that. And uh, I, I think it'll have a big effect. It'll, uh, suddenly others will kick in uh, and, and, and join them. So also, I think it needs uh, leadership on a company level and, um, and on an organizational level, your soccer clubs, whatever it is, yeah? uh, from, from your side, from all of our sides. Yeah, and I think that for companies, it's a different carrot and stick relationship because they have, they're chasing the goal of more profit. But then there's this threat of brand toxicity as well that governments aren't quite as prone to. Um, a qu checks out. So according to Bloomberg and EF, hyperscale computing companies have been the biggest buyers of renewable energy in 2021. Their purchases went up by 24%. Uh, they bought uh, 31.1 gigabytes, uh, gigawatts of energy, and that's the equivalent of 62,000 Corvettes. So where does the future lie for hyperscalers actually generating power for other users? And then what are the steps that we could take today to make that a reality? Yeah, I think that's an uh, uh, awesome idea. Yeah? Um, first, uh, one, one point before that. Yeah? So what you, what you mentioned sounds like a lot. Yeah? For you and me, it is a lot. I, I uh, recently spent uh, calculating if you know, we, we have uh, Google, for instance, has, has 8,000 times more revenue uh, than, than we have. Yeah? So if, if they had our, our values, yeah, uh, and before the end of the decade, they, they alone, they alone, yeah, could uh, transform the entire European energy system and get it uh, out of fossil uh, fuels. So, um, and, and the, the, the wealth of these um, huge uh, big tech companies is just biblical, it's unimaginable. Huh? Yeah. And they don't, don't live up to, to that responsibility, I think. But, but you're right, yeah, I think uh, perhaps they are much more, um, much better to, to challenge current utilities who sit on their legacy coal power plants, yeah, want to find someone to, to, to put that on, yeah? um, 
uh, they, they are much better suited uh, uh, than, than those companies uh, to, to become the green electricity uh, providers of the future. I think it's, a, it's an awesome idea. Yeah? Is, is there someone here from uh, Hyperscaler? Um, Perhaps um, could, could make this a strategic initiative. Huh? Oh, they're out there. And let me tell you, like in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. And this is a really good, uh, real, concrete example of that. And speaking of which, we're hearing a lot today about technologies towards a greener cloud. But then CloudFest is also all about networking and it's about partnerships. So what would you tell decision makers here in the audience and throughout the venue uh, about what they should be looking for in a partner towards a greener cloud and therefore greener communities? I, I would look for pure plays, for pure play partners. Yeah, if you have a company coming to you saying, okay, do you want lignite electricity or do you want uh, solar electricity? You shouldn't work with them. Yeah? They just basically take what the electricity portfolio yeah? and then uh, uh, sell, sell one of them for a higher price to the one person and the other one, uh, they, they dump it to the people who don't care anyhow. So it's just, it's just a, a repainting and repackaging effort from, from their side. Yeah? Greenwashing. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So um, I think you... And, and also, if you think about it, yeah, there, there are those huge infrastructures that destroy us. And destroy our, our planet, our, our livelihoods, our life support systems, and, and, and we need to sunset them. Yeah? Now, on the other side, we need to build up the new infrastructures, replacing them, regenerating our, um, our planet. Yeah, basically, I've talked about stopping uh, the mess, but, but we have to clean up as well, starting to do that. Yeah? So, so I, I think you should, as much as possible, get out from, from these infrastructures, and as much as possible, um, support and, and nurture those new infrastructures and mm -hmm. basically um, partner up with pure place from, from the new infrastructures. And so once CloudFest ends and the hangovers wear off and everybody's back home and you have to send that, you know, the decision makers, the C-suite is going to send that all employee email. And before they click send, what would you suggest that cloud service providers who might not be hyperscalers do to offer uh, climate neutral or climate friendly cloud? Honestly, I, I think you, you shouldn't offer climate neutral services. Boring, yeah? Um, so, so I think you could, you could set yourself apart with, with offering a climate positive mm -hmm. service. Yeah? And, and I, as I said, so it will set you apart from your competition if you're fast. Yeah? Uh, by the way, um, yeah, I, um, I, I hear a lot of people talking about, yeah, should we need so much courage and it's risky to be a, a leader, yeah? In, in most uh, industries, I don't know how it is in, in, in your particular industry, but in most industries, industries, the position of the first mover, of the pioneer, is already gone. That decision is gone. Yeah? You can only decide whether you want to, uh, to be a fast follower yeah, or, or laggard. Yeah? Um, good luck. Yeah? So um, uh, we waited. Cars, for instance, yeah? Um, I mean, what did it, how did people laugh at Tesla? Huh? And then, then this company is more valuable than all, all others of them together. So this position very often is gone. Um, you need to become a fast follower. And I would not settle for climate neutral right now. Yeah? I would build a climate positive uh, service. And, you know, a lot of people talk about, oh, it might be risky to make this move towards climate positive. But it seems clear from your talk that the risk is actually just from doing nothing. Like it grows more and more that it can tank your brand, it can screw your profits if you don't actually get on board with something like this. Yeah, in, indeed. And, and then once suddenly a critical mass of people has discovered that and that catches on, then it will be... From a, from a business perspective, it, it'll be too late. Yeah? All the, you know, the access to renewable energy is gone, everything is uh, sold, yeah, you won't find anything. Then uh, the access to nature-based solution is, is gone, everything. You, you, and then you're getting into panic mode, yeah? mm -hmm. trying to, how can I, how can I follow how, uh, with everyone else? So indeed, I think if, you, if you're early in this, you can very much benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And then you can sort of, it's almost like hungry, hungry hippos, that game where you take the marbles. There's only going to be so much space to take up. Do you, Do you have, have any closing, closing words for the crowd today? 
Well, as I perhaps said over there, yeah, a, 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 a thank you for, for having me here. And, um, and I think, uh, yeah, I mean, let's, um, let's do this. Right? If, if there's anything um, I, can, I can help you with in, in that regard, any, any experience you would like me to share uh, from Ecosia becoming a, a climate positive company, uh, drop me an email on, on whatever platform you want. And um, I encourage everyone to become a, an intrapreneur in your companies and, uh, and turn yourself to climate, to climate positive uh, business. Cool. Thank you very much. Please give it up for Dr. Wolfgang Holmes. Thank you so much, Wolfgang and Jordan, for moderating this short panel. Let's just do it, right? As you said, we all do it. Yeah, it can be so easy if we do it all together.